Yo, what's up guys, it's Jeff, and today we have the third developer beta of iOS 14.5. And unless things have changed by the time this video has published, we had to download the IPSW file from the developer website from Apple instead of downloading and installing it over the air. So that is specific to beta three. Fingers crossed that has now changed, but I just wanna let you guys know that that was the process we had to get through to get this update through to our iPhone 12 Pro Max, just uh, something that we had to do uh, for this specific update. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at iOS 14.5 beta three as the last two betas have been pretty eventful and see exactly what's new here in beta three. So this is the Ivanki dual USB-C dock that you can use for your MacBook or MacBook Pro devices. And I've actually been using it for quite some time now as I've been shooting a lot more outdoors these days and need a dock to transfer media from my camera onto my MacBook Pro. So what do I love about this dock specifically? Well, you have a ton of connection types, which include the SD and micro SD card slots. So I can use those connections on the go with my MacBook Pro again. And then some other really cool connections like the HDMI ports, which support dual 4K 60 Hertz panels for a workspace setup. And then a one gigabit ethernet port, which I've used to get a solid wire connection to my MacBook Pro when I'm live streaming. Now, what's also really cool is this dual USB-C dock also charges your computer during use. So really all you need is this dock and you're all set to go for all of your needs. Now, all in all, the Ivanki dual USB-C dock is a super solid and reliable device that you can use to extend the possibilities of your MacBook or MacBook Pro devices. And for the price, it's definitely a steal when you compare it to other docks out there with similar specs. So if you want to pick one up for yourself, check out the link in the video description down below and get yours today. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into some of the finer details that we see with this new update. And the first thing is that we have a new build number. That new build number is 18E5164H. Now, as for the total update size, as I said before, it was downloaded directly from the website. So I downloaded the complete update file, which was 5.96 or 5.69 gigabytes for the iPhone 12 Pro Max devices. Now moving on to the modem firmware and that too has now changed here in beta three and that new modem firmware number is 1.62.02. Now when we take a look at what's new here in iOS 14.5, we've seen a lot of new features so far in the past two betas. We've seen a new ability to unlock your phone with your Apple Watch when wearing a mask and we've also seen new UI around the software update page, the music app, and a few other places and we've also seen a huge addition to the emoji library as well. Now one of the biggest changes though was that we saw the ability to change the default music app. So now when using Siri, I can actually request a certain song to be played and it will actually use Spotify versus the Apple Music default app to make that search and start playing that song. So clearly there's already been some pretty major changes going on here in iOS 14.5 betas. And with beta three, we aren't really seeing any major changes per se as we saw before, but we did notice two things. The first is the new item tracking tab in the Find My app. This tab shows you that you can track individual items that are manufactured by companies that are not specifically Apple. Now initially I thought this may be a reference to AirTags and maybe in the future the AirTags will be in this menu but it doesn't look like AirTags are referenced anywhere here. Now the second thing I noticed was something very much needed in the first couple betas and that is improved system performance. So in betas one and two, I noticed that a lot of apps were stalling upon launching them or just flat out freezing up when trying to operate them. And I'd also noticed that certain UI operated very slowly and overall the performance was just not good at all. Now it seems like everything is coming together here in beta three and now performance is definitely visually better. So if you were having issues like myself with that in the first two betas, I recommend that you do update because this is a huge improvement over what we've seen in the past two betas. I cannot stress that enough. Now, as for battery life, I can say that things seem to be about the same after running a quick battery performance test. Battery life for me on devices from the iPhone 12 Pro Max all the way down to the iPhone 8 Plus was never a problem using iOS 14.5. So if you have those devices, battery life should still remain in good standing with those devices and this software update. Okay, so after talking about the new features, performance and battery life, I guess that leads us to the big question, should I install this onto my personal device? 
My answer would simply be yes, because of the significant visual speed improvements that we see here in beta three. The past couple of weeks have been, I guess, frustrating at the very least, having to struggle with those performance issues, plaguing apps like Instagram, Snapchat, and just a lot of other apps that I use quite daily. Now, also another thing for you Tesla owners is that if you want to share a location with the Tesla app that sends that map data to your car, that, functioning, that functionality now works again where it wasn't in beta one and two. And that was a big deal for me as well. So um, if you guys do own a Tesla and regularly send map data to your car, that actually now works here in beta three. It seems like that bug has been fixed. Okay, so that was today's iOS 14.5 beta update video. And after getting to this part of the video, I can say that the over the air update is now live. So if you want to update, it should be available via the software update page. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you want to see more content in the near future, definitely get subscribed, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell button to get notifications when any new content is released. You can also check me out on Twitter at Jeff updated. And we also have the updated podcast to check out as well. Links to both of those will be down in the video description below. But anyways, guys, I hope to see you guys in some future content or on some social media platforms sometime soon. But until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.